Hello there, and thanks for listening in to Henderson Performance Radio. As most of you in the powerlifting world probably know, USAPL Raw Nationals just wrapped up a couple weeks ago in Orlando. And in addition to coaching over a couple of days, I also got to meet lots of new friends, two of which you will hear in this episode. They are the names behind one of the fastest growing and most popular apparel brands in the strength and powerlifting community. And I'm speaking of Mallory and Josh of LVD Fitness. This interview was done off the cuff, and we get into everything from the origin of LVD to how they help those in need with clean water to how they got the likes of Jen Thompson on the roster and the similarities and differences in the powerlifting scene between the USA and where they're from in Canada. So I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. So without further ado, this is Mallory and Josh of LVD Fitness. What's going on, y'all? We are on the line with Mal and Josh from LVD. We are here in Orlando, Florida at the 2017 USAPL Raw Nationals. Guys, how are you doing? We're good. It's last day of uh, six days, five days, I don't know. Six day, week long, jam packed, action packed, powerlifting. Packed. packed. It's all packed. <laughs> Event. So, no, we're good. We've been good. Awesome. You guys have been here since day one. What was that, Tuesday? Yeah, we got in Monday. Monday. So, yeah. bright and early Tuesday, we were setting up. Nice. I've been here for two days. I haven't seen a ray of sunshine. I've yeah. been down in this place. <laughs> Whenever we have meets, people are like, oh, like, how's Orlando? I'm like, well, their conference center is great. Like, <laughs> yeah. I've seen windows. Yeah. Where it looks awesome. Out I've there. heard there's a Disney here. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So obviously from someone like me who uh, is not too familiar with the whole apparel side of things, kind of what that uh, involves, tell me a little bit about what LVD is, what it is that you stand for, and then we'll get into your origin story. So LVD stands for Lift, Visualize, Dominate, and we are a strength apparel brand uh, for the modern, modern day athletes. Uh, where for every item sold, we provide a month of clean water to a child in a developing country. Um, right now, we're mainly focusing on the powerlifting niche because myself and Mallory, we're both in the community, we're both competitors, and we noticed that there wasn't a brand that well represented us, and um, yeah. Cool. Uh, and LVD is Lift, Visualize, Dominate. Now, how did that name come about? Does that have any, any particular significance? Yeah, so it's kind of funny. It started out as uh, livid without the eyes. Uh-huh. You're trying um, to be cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. And because, you know, a lot of people when they lift, it's a little bit like eight man strong, lift angry. But we didn't like how much of a angry connotation there was because we're not really that type of person. Um, and then as we were playing with that name, we're like, well, if it's going to be three letters, it's got to stand for something too, because people are always going to ask. And then as we were working on it, like we just started calling it LVD more and more. And then we're like, you know what? I think it's just LVD. And yeah, and then the Lift Visualize Dominate is just kind of a process to us. Obviously relevant to powerlifting, but kind of life in general. You put in the work, you set those goals, and then you go for it. And that's kind of how we see it is as a process. Cool. Yeah. So you guys, unbeknownst to me, I guess when I first rolled up, I was like, oh, you guys have been around for four or five years. <laughs> and you're like, no, nah. definitely not. Only, what, two, two and years. a half? No, two years Just in two. November. Oh, wow. Yeah, so not even two years yet. Yeah, so I'm, I'm still trying to get it. Yeah. But of course, you know, it seems like, and of course my memory might be a little on the fuzzy side, seems like obviously I've seen your name out a lot, not the least of which being because... I'm recently from Charlotte, North Carolina, in Jen right. Thompson's <laughs> neck of the woods, <laughs> yeah. seeing her sporting you guys. Uh, so how did you get, I mean, specifically talking about Jen Thompson, how did you guys hook up with her and what, is that, what does that look like in terms of who you guys 
like to pair up with or what does that whole situation kind of look like? Yeah, so Jen's actually a funny story. Uh, I think most people know the Iron Sisterhood camps that they do now. Mm -hmm. So that started as a Canadian camp. So Jen came down to Canada for it and we were there as sponsors. So we were hanging out with um, the whole team that was organizing it. And we had never met Jen before. We knew she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never met Jen. Yeah. And um, we started chauffeuring her and Kim, which was like hilarious too because we were like, oh, talking to the organizers and we're like, we have like a few extra seats if you want us to give anyone a ride. She's like, yeah, I think uh, we're going to have you drive Jen and Kim. And we're like, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> so that was really cool. And then over that weekend, we just got to know her, also Kim and then Matt and Susie. That was like a big weekend where we really got to know people because it was like spending time outside of not just saying hi to me. We actually had dinner, everything like that. Um, and then, like, the next week, we were just talking about it, and we are like, man, like, how cool if, like, one day Jen Thompson would be an LVD athlete. And we were just, like, talking all about that. And then we're up at my cottage, and I get a Facebook message from Jen, and it's this paragraph, and she's basically just saying how she loved meeting us and how she loves everything our brand's about, and she doesn't seek out sponsorships much because she's not into pushing brands and, you know, for monetary value or anything. And she just said she really believed in us and would we ever consider having her as an athlete. And it was a very like, whoa moment. Um, and obviously we said yes. Right. <laughs> we were like, more than consider. <laughs> we're like, you're, you're on the team no matter what, basically. If wow. you're down, we're down. So. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. And it just goes to show, as we were talking a little bit a couple minutes ago, um, as an apparel brand, you have this line to toe where it's like, you want and you need to stand for something mm -hmm. that is obviously within integrity for any other kind of athlete to kind of stand stand behind and of course clean water is the theme so tell us how the idea came about and how the process after you know money has exchanged hands so to speak how the clean water gets to those who who need it so we actually partnered up with a international uh, charity who uh, operates in 26 different countries around the world. Uh, fortunately enough, their, head, their Canadian headquarters is in Ottawa, our home city. So it made it a lot easier for us to meet with them face to face, um, trade stories, and really make sure we were a fit. Mm -hmm. um, how you come up with is really cool. Uh, so Mallory and I have always been entrepreneurial, and we followed um, like-minded brands like Tom Shoes. So for every shoe you buy, they provide a similar pair to somewhere in Africa. And Tentry Apparel from Canada. So for every shirt, every item purchase, they plant ten trees. Um, and one day we were at a fitness expo, um, just walking around, and we noticed a bunch of fitness people wearing Tentry shirts with Tom Shoes. Right. And we were like, oh my god, like these people, like care about the environment, and, but are also into, into fitness. But there's not one brand that's specifically targeting them, mm -hmm. and we were like, that might be there might be an opportunity there, and it just took off from there. Awesome. Yeah. 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 And in terms of the process, uh, we do our donations monthly, so we'll figure out how many items we sold since it's based off number of items and not a percentage of sales, um, and then we just do it through their online portal. It's pretty straightforward, and then. Every once in a while, they'll send us an email checking in and they'll give us a little profile on someone. Um, and basically, we let them figure out where that money goes um, based off supply and demand needs, right? We don't want to say, oh, we wanted to go to X country when they're sure. the experts in that and they know who needs it, when they need it. So we didn't pick any country because, of course, you want to give it to whoever needs it the most at the time. Uh, so they handle all of that. Right. Uh, well, that is really cool. And I guess, you know, coming from the entrepreneurial side, especially since you guys are, it seems like, have achieved massive success in a relatively short amount of time, which, you know, kudos to you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. You're hustlers. You're obviously very smart. You know what you're doing. What are some of the struggles and obstacles and things that we may not uh, always be privy to, things that may be going behind the scenes or unexpected obstacles when it comes to running a show like this? Uh, I think a lot of it's just like the tiny logistical things that you don't think about. Like when we were getting set up, it's like, okay, so how do we track expenses? Like 
all of those little things, um, shipping to the US, like when we have an event, what do we need to put on the forms for those shipments? What are the best ways to do it? And it's those little things, which can be really frustrating because it takes away from like building the brand, but it's the important stuff. So it's almost like the housekeeping I find. Yeah, the, more is the, the biggest obstacles. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess it's also um, like projections since we're still really new. Uh, it's hard to, to project what sizes to bring. Sometimes right. we'll bring like X size, and all of a sudden the other like another, like a size that we didn't bring as much of that like doesn't sell and then other way around if you bring a lot of that size that sold out last time and then the other sizes will sell out and I don't know like powerlifting is really interesting because we have to cater to extra small all the way to 3 and 4 XL right so we gotta like stock everything yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah it's another one it's the little stuff it's the yeah, little it's stuff the little things, and it yeah. just adds up and it's the stuff that you can let slip through the cracks to a certain degree right because if you don't want to figure out how to do your expenses, you could let that slide for like six months, eight months, you know. Um, tax. Yeah, whereas tax if you're doing a collection, like you need the shirts out, right? Yeah. So it's just making sure we stay on top of those little things and figuring it out, right? Because I worked for startups before and I have a background in marketing, so I can do that stuff. But when you're at a startup, you don't necessarily see how they're tracking the expenses, those little things. So it's it's the t taking the time to teach yourself in the middle of all the craziness. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now, obviously, you guys mentioned you are from Ottawa. Tell us a little bit about what the powerlifting scene is like in the Great White North compared to. Uh, I guess you guys have been down to America for more than a couple events, mm -hmm. right? So, how do things kind of compare with the whole powerlifting scene? Uh, for the most part, it's pretty similar, and uh, it's just a scaling thing. Um, the USAPL equivalent to Canada has about 2,500 members, whereas USAPL has 15,000, so it's just a bigger scale, um, but relatively similar. Uh, being in Ottawa, we, we were really fortunate, so our province of Ontario has the most uh, CPU members in all of Canada, uh, so it made it easier for us to go to different events and network and grow within the community close to home mm -hmm. instead of having to fly to the east coast or the west coast mm -hmm. and then yeah 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 it's very much the same vibe because it's the same type of people i think anybody really who gets into the ipf i feel like has similar values similar communities uh it's just like the little things like we only have one platform meets like we've never ran so a yeah we've never oh, done multi-platform whereas like in the states it's like even local meets are multi-platform yeah yeah so our first experience with that was last year's nationals cool. which was five right so we're like yeah. Blue what yeah. is going on and it's just little things like that like in canada all levels of meets you have to have the ipf approved stuff whereas in the states like local meets they'll allow extra singlets as long as they meet the requirements yep so it's, it's those little things, like at our nationals, you can't enter as a masters and an open. You have to pick one, which is just interesting too, because you watch this, like some of them are playing strategy, but if they're a masters lifter, they're playing strategy for open, but if they lose, they still get to go to worlds. Right. Whereas if a masters lifter in Canada wants to compete in open, you're basically giving up your masters pass into worlds ah. to compete. So I see both sides of it, but it's just interesting because it does change the game a little bit because yeah, they're no locked doubt. in, right? They can play different moves. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, so tell us a little bit about y'all's personal uh, athletic endeavors. I assume we're both powerlifters. Yes. <laughs> um, what are some of your recent competitions and or what does 2018 have in store for you guys? So I actually just competed, I think three weeks ago now. Oh, wow. Um, in our provincial... Uh, championships, it's mm -hmm. equivalent to like a state championship. Um, and actually, in Canada, you have to do the provincials before nationals. Gotcha. So yeah, every, every year. Yeah, every year. Um, so I did that meet. It was my last meet as a junior. Um, I had an amazing meet. Uh, I didn't cut weight. Uh, my training was just going so well. I'm just, I just went in and had fun. Uh, PR'd all my lifts and. Hold for. The win? <laughs> Pull for the win for the third meet in a row. Oh, wow. It always comes down to yeah. last deadlift. <laughs> oh, man. Thankfully, I, I, I'm a deadlifter, so I, like, I have a little bit of an, an advantage. Uh -huh. But uh, no, like, the meet went really well. Uh, and my goals for 2018 is to make the world team because world is in Canada. 
oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Calgary? Yes. Calgary. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, what was your last deadlift? My last deadlift was uh, uh, six seventeen in pounds. I don't oh, know. I don't know yeah. if that is in kilos. We don't. Really yeah. So he put on whatever he needed just to win. Holy cow! On body weight. Nice work, man. And then the next week in the gym with straps, he pulled six fifty. Holy! Like what a jerk, right? <laughs> Dude, I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Nice. yeah. But yeah, so next year will be tough. It'll be my first year open. Uh, right, 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 right. But I'm excited for the challenge, and my ultimate goal is to make the world team. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, how about you? Uh, so because our province is really big, our like state championship is split. So it was sub junior, junior, and then it's open masters. So mine is actually when we get back. So I got like the short stick in this deal. <laughs> gotcha. So I have a meet mid November, and we still have like two trips before then. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna do that, and then I think I'm gonna do nationals as well. Still playing with it, because for this year's nationals, we're doing a lot of fun stuff, so I'm gonna be helping out with some like seminars, live streams, interviews, so we'll see. I'll have my hands full, but I think I'm still gonna compete at it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, cool thing, guys. Well, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Um, you know, all I'm trying to do, much like you guys, is trying to support the community in, in any way that I can. For sure. Um, you guys are doing Help a lot more than I am, but anything I can do to help. Every little piece, right? Yeah, anything I can do to help put people on, you know, I'll, I'll take my time to do so. So, to kind of wrap up, what is the three to five year goal and vision for LVD? <laughs> well, yeah, so we have like, we have long term plans and we have short term plans, and then we have like adaptability, right? Mm. So, we've always seen it as starting in powerlifting because it's the niche that we know best grow there, learn things there, and then expand into other strength sports. Because a lot of the big sport, or sorry, big brands in fitness are either bodybuilding oriented or this concept of lifestyle fitness where it's just training for life. Um, so we really want to get a handle on that strength side and we've actually focused narrowly on powerlifting longer than we originally thought, but it's because of the way that powerlifting has been growing. Mm -hmm. And you know, it really was a timing play as well. We just got in at the right time as it was growing. Um, so a lot of people that we talk to now just know LVD because when they started powerlifting, like everybody they trained with knew LVD from different reasons. But uh, that's really been great for us. But we definitely in the next few years want to expand, you know, get into strongman, Olympic weightlifting, CrossFit, because it's all the same lifestyle really, right? Yeah. People are all very similar, they're very goal oriented, and we really want to be a brand that represents that. So, some athletes cross sports too, right? And it's not like they change people, they're attracted to the same kind of game, uh, and that's what we really want to represent at the end of the day. Awesome. Well, Valerie and Josh from Lift Visualize Dominate, what is your URL or, or social handle that people uh, should check out? Yeah, so everything. <clears throat> I'm missing my voice by the end of the week. <laughs> Everything is LVD Fitness. So our website's lvdfitness.com, our Facebook page, our Instagram. It's all just LVD Fitness. LVD Fitness. Yeah. Well, cool thing, guys. Thank you so much for chatting. Thank you Thanks for having me. And uh, if not beforehand, hope to see you at the next Nationals. Yes. Be there. You got it. Hey, thanks again for listening. Of course, you can find the show notes to this episode on the website at zachhenderson.com slash LVD. Until next time, stay strong.